Okay, you're good to go. Good afternoon, everyone. And actually, you are right. I was here back in 2015 for the um, co conference of the third of Latvia, and it was so cool. It has been a good experience. Uh, I love the country. Um, I'm back, so happy to be here. Uh, this talk is a mix of human relationships and technical and te techy stuff whenever you do pen testing. Uh, there should be, yeah, there's our mod control, should work, okay. And here's a small abstract to explain you why. I ran my first pen test back in 1995. That was a long time ago. That, that means that I keep on to get old. And that was against a Vax VMS. I think that anyone in the audience remember, oh, well, a smile, so a few reminds about the Vax v VMS. It was a huge machine and blah, blah, blah. And that wrote bullet number two, uh, a short story, because at that time it was made by DAC, DEC, that was acquired by Compaq, who, is, who isn't anymore here, that was acquired by HP, and HP then decided that the business was over. That's a pity, because the best OS and the most secure OS ever encountered in my life is VMS and OpenVMS. Uh, I personally wrote about like five old days or exploits for VMS that are still up and running and active. I used to pen test on Sun Solaris, IBM AX, and so on and so on, but those two OS are still over there. I don't know what's your opinion on Solaris. My opinion is that it's a, it's a gold mine of bugs that uh, uh, on, the bad side, or on the bad side for the clients, they will keep on to be there and there and there. I started with X25, so before the internet, and that's over, apparently. Now we have IPv6, and I think that that will be fun for both for the pen testers and attackers for pl plenty of years. And f 5G is coming, IoT is a nightmare already, and so on and so on. I joined Isaacon back in 2000. I gave this morning um, a talk at 12.30 about uh, Isaacon and OSS DMM. Uh, but the, despite all of this, the clients and the companies, they keep on to run a tons of, of mistakes. Everyone, every time that they try to mix the word, uh, I have to run my business, I have to engage some, someone for up and testing. And they, this talk is, about, is exactly about this. So, agenda, but let's try to optimize our time. Small intro, this is me. Actually, a uh, co couple of things I'm proud of. I spent five years of my life at ENISA, the European Security Agency, um, at the PSG, at the Permanent Stakeholder Group, and I learned a couple of things, uh, how much the uh, politics is kind of bad. I'm a technical guy, I'm no, not a politic and uh, especially how much the politics can impact in the wrong way, in the bad way, into IT security. Uh, other things I'm proud of is about Uniqri, is the, is the agency from the UN, because I joined them back in 2002, 2004, and uh, I am the guy who brought the analysis of cybercrime at the, U at the UN and the United Nations. Uh, thing number three, of course, I'm so proud of Isaacom, and, and so on and so on. Let's go to us. Uh, as I said at the, at the beginning, is about uh, human beings. So the very first thing is the mindset. And in two slides, I will have a, like a, a game, a quick game for the audience. But I think that images can explain at the best. So this thing is about. Probably I'm mistaken something. Just happened. Okay. Is it self-explaining? But I'll explain more. Uh, it doesn't ma matter at all in which company, at which companies or kind of business you are going to run up and test. You will always find this: two departments, two people, two backgrounds that they don't understand each other's. They will ever understand each other's. And um, it's bad, I know, but again, it's not, not, it isn't so much about the, uh, the technical aspect. It's about the human beings, as I said at the beginning. So let's do a uh, quick test. I would like some of you to raise your hand and answer to, oops, big mistake. 
Uh, if you could tell me like a few ways to turn off all the lights in this room. Any ideas, any suggestions? Just try. Yeah. Yep, it's the most <laughs> cool approach. It's a standard one. Good, I like this. So you are hacker inside or up and tester inside your soul, <laughs> Pro probably. <laughs> okay, let, uh, let's go. I love you, boy. He's Alex, a cool guy from this country. <laughs> Actually, we may turn the switch off, break the bulb. We may do everything that I see or so. You, you said also right one. Uh, I'm a good soul. Um, I love to read books and to think about the new things. So I, I love so much also the number 10, close my eyes. Why I'm speaking to you about this if, we, if the topic is open testing? It's because of this. Uh, in function of your answers, you may, you may already understand if you are more a constructive guy or a destructive guy. If you think more like an auditor, a designer, a pen tester, a black hat, a white hat, or whatever else, a pink hat, a purple hat, who cares? It means that all the times that we run a pen test, if we try or run some action that impacts on the process chain, this will affect on the result. And this is what my talk is about. We may try, we may think a side attack, and this is also something that often is mistaken. So let's go to the meat. Let's start with the people, the mindset and backgrounds. It depends on the country, it depends on the culture, but you will always have a reference, a contact point at the client side, and they will 100% error-free be among one of those backgrounds. So I'm an open mind guy, but I hope that if there are any pen testers in the room, that you will never, is there a, a pointer here? Don't find it, well, you will never find a lawyer on the other side of the desk I don't have anything against the lawyers, but we do pen test things and they do lawyers. It's different. So this will happen. It will happen for sure that you may find a very cool IT guy. I mean, he knows about IT, but again, IT, it's his job. Our job is security. It's different. Or an IT guy who is not experienced at all because he has been hired because of who knows why. Uh, you may find an InfoSec guy the manager, the second manager, that is not, is, he, he's not skilled at all. You may, find, you may find auditors. Auditors, actually, they have to deal like us with security, with uh, the data, and the compliances, and the laws, and so on and so on. But again, they are auditors, and we are pen testers. And often it happens that even if we think that we work on the same things, we don't understand each other's they have their languages and we have our own language and so on and so on and so on i have a big uh also slides so i don't want actually to tell I, too much and too long on this uh i don't know about your country in italy spain france often you find a former law enforcement officer a again i love the law enforcement i get tons of friends from fbi to ncis to whoever but their background in most of the cases is not about pen testing, uh, it's about other things. Uh, eventually, it may happen that you will find the right one, an uh, experienced security guy, but they are so rare to find around. Uh, so, this, uh, I have the meaning that uh, most of the times they will not understand you, we will not understand them, and it's going to get complex and complex. Uh, whenever you will find any of these backgrounds, and, but they are skilled and they studied more, in any case, they will not know that much about pen testing, and I will explain this that is in a few slides. Uh, then, it, again, it's about the human being, so in this slide, I try to enter in the mind of the client, of the customer, and the clients and the companies that are calling you for open testing in order to hire you, you or your company, 
they will always ask to themselves, do I, do I really need a security test or is just a sound, sound, something that, who knows? Uh, if the answer is yes, how often should I run a, a, a pen test? I'm telling you of the, all of these things because I heard clients in the last 20, 20 more years that uh, try to ask us to run a pen test every week. That's insane and useless because at the company side, they will not have the time to fix everything. It's impossible. Uh, who should do the security test? Who should run? Uh, and here we go. It, it's better to have a consultant or to train internally some guys. Uh, I think that none of these answers are correct. Another st stereotype that I often find, hey, we don't need a team of pen testers. One guy is enough. Now, I know tons of guys around the world are really skilled, but it's kind of uh, it's a black swan again to be able to find a pen tester who is able to manage everything, who is able to do it uh, on um, different OS and the web aspects and so on and so on and the network. No. Uh, a pen tester who acts alone to me is, is it's a mistake already. It should be a team. I don't mean uh, a huge team, but two, at least three is better. Um, then they ask to themselves, uh, what do I need to know in order to hire, to hire a consultant? Is this CV? Or they will ask you for the references. I mean, I want to know, I want to know for which companies you run this job. Hey, if you do real security, you don't disclose ever the name of the clients. You may say uh, five or 500 important banks in country A, B, C, Z, uh, uh, we are skilled on SCADA, blah, 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 but never disclose the identity of the clients. Uh, if a customer asks me, hey, I have this company, I want to like, uh, I, want, well, I want to know your opinion, and I go to the website and they list the, the logos of the companies that are clients to them, to me, that's not serious at all. It's marketing. I can understand the marketing. I, I can understand the, uh, that they are there to do business, but to me, it's an ethical mistake, and, and um, it's wrong at the end. And that, as a last point, the company, the client, will always think that they need to spend as less as possible. Now, one of the things that I'm here to tell you and to explain you that I learned is that the security is like, how can I explain to you? Uh, she is my wife, she's Selene. Uh, a few years ago, she told me, hey, if I want to buy shoes, I don't buy the shoes from the Chinese market for five euros. I buy for a thousand the, I choose the brand, Selene, the, the Valentino. And I used to say, hey, they, they cost a thousand euros. They say, yeah, and she answered, yes, but those last for 10 years or more. It, it's okay to my food, it's classy. If something gets wrong, they give me a new pair. Now, now maybe this is an extreme example. I love her so much. But try to apply this to the pen testing, which I don't mean that you should spend as high as possible, but you should not even engage someone for the pinyas, because if you spend pinyas, you get pinyas. Issue number two is, again, human beings and things. And this happened to me so many times. Uh, it happened to me to reject, to say no to a request for engagement of, of me and my team a few times, but it happened. At. And why? Because if you love your job, if you believe in pen testing and proactive security, if you know what you're doing, your inspiration, your expectation, your goal is not to be engaged by a company that uh, they don't want to buy the quality, they don't want to recognize de de your experience and background, uh, they don't want to be honest, and they don't have the right budget. But mm, most of all, I don't want, and this is a true story, uh, to be engaged for a pen test and to do a job at our best, and then realize or discover that the rapper that costed you so much in time, efforts, and, and in believing in that, will be hidden somewhere, will not be shown to the right guys at the company. Another thing that is really bad is then when, when a department of a company engage you in order to shit 
on the head of other department. This is so sad, but again, it's human beings, and this happens. So if you can test to a telco or to a bank, insurance, or whoever, uh, you got no idea how often this happens, that they engage you because you are among the best, just in order to kick the ass of the other guy, because internal ego, and they fight each other. So we, we should be like, in this case, in this case like, like the lawyers, we should always work for our client, the one who engages us, but we should not fall into the mistake to uh, be a supporter of those internal fights. Uh, the last ballot actually it happened. Back in 99, we were engaged for the first pen test on a telco of our, in, in, in our life. Uh, just to give you the idea, from two SIM cards, at the time we had GPRS access, with two SIM cards, in three weeks we've been able to fully own the operator. And it was split like HQA and HQB. HQB engaged us, HQB was uh, in charge of the RAN, which is the most critical part of a telco. And they decided to hide the report. I mean, all the board, all the management, and the HQ, uh, a, the other HQ, they never were informed that uh, five, five guys, in 99 I was like uh, 28 and something, I think, or 30 years old, were able, uh, just in three weeks, from Monday to Friday, to fully own the telco, and no one at the telco realized or smelled our attacks at all. Uh, to be more clear, we were, we were the root uh, billing, I mean, everywhere in the telco. We could commit fraud, uh, ch change or mo modify all the CDRs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, at the end of the story, our job reappeared back in 2001 when they cl closed HQB and they start, start, started to move all the files and the archives to the other town. And the guy who knew me, he found our big thing and called me and said, hey, is this true that you made this job in 99 and you kick our ass? And we say, yeah, but I think that you should know it. You are the boss. Say, no, I just discovered it now. Could you please come to me and explain me the whole story? Thank you. Uh, again, I insist on this. Uh, I know that we do our job for a salary and the money and to live, but I think that uh, whenever you are a doctor, uh, a lawyer, a pen tester, and other careers, you should really try to not, to not, uh, uh, to go straight to the point and not uh, depend or hide or to do anything that is dirty because the history taught us that when it's about pen testing and it's about to play too dirty, shit happens all the times, all the times. Issue number three, again, is the slang, is the words, it's about wording and words, which impacts on quality and security and budget of your job. So how many times you have been called or at your company someone which most of the time they don't know or he or she doesn't know what uh, he talks about, said we need a security assessment. Security assessment means everything. It can be a theoretical part, it can be an interview, an audit approach, a pen testing approach, it can be uh, up to reverse engineering, I mean, I mean to everything. Uh, it leads to misunderstanding. Uh, it's clear to me, it's obvious to you, that if I have to assign, if I am the CFO, and they have to assign a budget for an automated pen testing, it would be small if the same uh, job should be done, will be done uh, by human beings and by hand, it will take a longer time, other skills, and it will be a uh, higher cost. Uh, point number three, whenever you will go for a VA, as a, is the slang term, uh, most of the times it will give you, it, it will give back to the client uh, uh, poor answers. That means 
Yes, you may have this bug or this vulnerability or you may not. We cannot give you the real answer because we don't go farther. We just stop at this thing because we have a tool and the tool is saying, well, probably there is this bug, but in order to exploit the bug, you should uh, switch to up and test or to other kind of, kind of approaches. Uh, on the other hand, it's, it's bad to say, it's sad to say, but all the times that the client is not clear or is ignorant and they don't know what, what, they really, what they really want or what they would really need, this will help those players on the market which they think that to run a security test as actually is just is to make out money. Only that. And that, again, is wrong. Uh, I have to hurry up. Uh, to me, it's so important on this point. If you, it's like, if you are insecure, I will be insecure. If, if a country on the other side of, of, uh, of the world is insecure, probably the cybercrime will take advantage of, of that, and they, they will build... They will build a campaign, an attack, or whatever, which eventually at the end will hit to my country and to your country. So why the companies they engage for pen testing is because they want to be secure. So if a pen test is bad done, it will impact again on me, on you, on you, on all of us, because you may be the client, the end client of the bank, of the telco, of uh, a government, and we live in one country. So. Again, is the loop of the story. Uh, so what I'm trying to tell you is that whenever it's about a SEC test, a security test, uh, the budget thing should not be a stopper, a uh, limitation to the quality of the project that you are in gadget for. As an example, this is just a slide from Isacom. This is the practice security square. So it's obvious that if a vulnerability scanning is there, it's cheap and it takes a short time, but up in testing is there. It's expensive and it, and it takes a longer time, and so on and so on and so on. <coughs> Point number four out of five, I'm, I'm done. Uh, I would like to ask you, how many of you ever hired a red team, a tiger team, or whoever is the word to mention, in order to execute a pen test at your company, agency, or whatever? Anyone ever run up and test? No, I don't believe this. Okay, yeah. Uh, how many among you uh, in the audience are pen testers? Yeah, okay. And in the bot of the things, uh, which was the me methodology that you use as pen testers or as client at the client side that the supplier told you that he used? if any? The answer is here. Uh, this is a key issue. And again, when I wrote this slide, I was trying to put myself in the pants of the company, of the client. So how many times our clients told us, hey, please tell me how you make it and which is your standard approach, because it's years and years that I keep on to get crazy in order to compare the report from the supplier A, B, C, and D, because it looks like there is no standard around, and again, it's wrong. What really that, that makes me mad and makes me angry is when a company, a, a supplier, answers to the client, yes, we have a methodology, but you know, it's our stuff, it's very internal, it's private, we cannot tell you anything about this. You, as the client, you have the right and you must know all the details of the approach and the standards that the supplier will use because the true story that no one is telling you is that when you engage someone for up and testing, you are giving to them the keys of the kingdom and that's your company. So if I would have to choose and to do a rank, the most important thing is the trust. Then is the quality, skills, references, and so on, and the price, and blah, 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 blah. But trust 
is the, is the key point here. Uh, again, for most of them, uh, what is a security test? It should be a measurement of all the configs, but also legal aspect, and best practice, and so on and so on, in action, live. So it's not like we are doing an analysis post-incident, but it's live, it's ongoing. So it should be a qualified inspection, and again, that's why there is a huge di difference between a pen test, a OSDEM certified test, a VA or a, or a VS, or a RA, and so on and so on. Uh, another thing that is a stereotype is when the client, they call you and they say, well, I heard that you are really good hackers, so we, don't, we will not tell you anything about the, the target, the TOE, uh, not even the IP addresses. If you're hackers, you should be able to find by yourself. Well, that's so stupid. Uh, from a general point, yes, they are right, but uh, you have to authorize me by law in order to run a pen test, or it, otherwise it's an unlawful activity. So we should write down the IP addresses and the target on a form, and you have to sign it, and me also. It's by the law. So uh, it cannot exist at all that you, you don't provide us with all the IP addresses. But again, because I love to be clear, and whenever you do pen testing, you must be clear. It could be a blind attack, a gray box, a tandem, blah, 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 blah. And everything is explained here. Because if we start to talk with the client in this way, I agree, and I love this. Uh, if they ask for a blind pen test, imagine that it's like a role play or war gaming. If it's about a double blind, to me, is more similar to a pen testing. A gray box approach is more like a self-assessment, and so on and so on. If it's a reversal thing, it's more an internal job and training, I would say, of the red team in the company or of the blue team at the, company, at the client side. Uh, this is just, all, again, from the OSDEM. Uh, what is on the back? of a pen testing, when I told you before, is a measurement of the operation. Uh, how many times the supplier, he will just tell you about a vulnerability, red, yellow, or, or green? Uh, to me, that's wrong, because if we find something that is strange, it's an anomaly, and uh, on the back of an anomaly, it could be everything. It could be a serious and bad security flaw, or just a mistake, or, or so on, or so on. So we have to measure everything, also because when the client will give our output to the, to the auditors, or to those guys who run dice analysis, we must provide them with uh, real info and facts and data. OSDEM is my choice, has been my choice, because it's free, it's open, it's, so, it's, so, uh, it's the right thing, thing to use. A few info for you. And issue number five, uh, and that's again to put myself in the pants on the client, of the client, you cannot always test what, should, what really should be tested. Uh, if you hire me to test your environment, uh, you will never be able to authorize me to test your ISP. It does, does the, the mom, mom, or easy example. And the security flow could not stay inside of you, but at your ISP or whoever else. Uh, so there will always be constraints on the timing, on the budget. Uh, we have this thing which I don't, I don't want to say is bad, is good, but is there, and is the cloud. Uh, who may ever authorize as a customer to run up and test on cloud? Only the owner of the cloud. So it opens up a big thing, uh, other things to think about. Uh, the target could be out of scope. There could be entry points that you don't think about at all. In the last 
Now it's, I think, eight years. We keep on to find companies that when we ask them before to start a job, uh, do you have IPv6? They say no. They, they have it up and running, but they don't know that they have it. So if I would be the attacker, most of the times I will first start to hack you from IPv6, from an old backup, from a asterisk, from other entry points, and then only at the end through IPv4 or other attack entry, po attack entry points. Um, <coughs> it, it will happen, it happens that the red team, despite of the skills, uh, references, and so on, uh, field, field experience is field experience. So our red team could be the, the best ever to pen test banks, but they don't know anything about airports or, or the opposite or who else. Uh, if we have to speak about uh, critical infrastructures, electricity plants, and so on and so on, those clients, they should have a test bed because one thing is it's if we run an attack to a bank over production, uh, live, and something wrong happens. It can happen, and you cannot withdraw at your ITM for half an hour. It's a bad thing, but then who cares? But if you are engaged to pen test an energy plant, and you do a mistake, and you cut off the electricity for hours and hours, when it's December in Riga, that's so bad. Uh, Emma Dan is the last slide. As you may have understood, I love my job. I have the, a true passion for my job, and I'm trying also to handle it to you. Uh, to be a professional of pen testing is so cool. I saw uh, pedophiles and friends and um, people who started uh, as there on the left and then they fall in love for the pen testing and they started to study, to apply themselves and they, and they grow up or also on the, on the other hand. So what I'm trying to, to tell you with this is that all of these b b b backgrounds and, ca and ca careers could eventually evolve uh, into, the, into, into our job and my job. A few links for you, and we have time for Q&A. Thank you so much. I hope it has been useful. Yeah. Thank you, Raul. Do we have questions for Raul? Raise your hand. OK. Uh, they are actually keen to go to the coffee break. Yeah, yeah. So, I so, know. I know. Uh, we need to copy your presentation. Yeah, so, actually, so I it will be. It to the, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a, in a few minutes, I'll do it. I have the little, Super. So, so they will have those there. links and everything. Yeah. Uh, uh, how and do you just before, exit from here? So I unplug yeah, the key. Yeah. You, just, oh, okay. you, just, you just close it. Yep. Mm hmm. And uh, before, before you are allowed to, to leave, uh, I have a small present for you. We always do. Thank you very much. And one simple question. How many people in the company should know that penetration tests are going on? Commenced. Ooh, that's a big thing. That's a good thing to ask me. Uh, it depends. Answer it. It's, it depends. But, uh, on my side, there should be the owner of the budget and the lawyers. At least, maybe that's it. Again, so we again, don't tell depends. all employees. If it's a black box, a yeah, yeah. white light or so, and I love of your answer because often also it happens that if the if the guys are informed, they will try to. Uh, change, apparently change their behavior, data, so yeah, okay. that, that they are so quick and fast and they control everything even if it's true. So it would bring back to the client uh, untrue answer and reporting. Okay, too optimistic. Yeah. Good one, yeah. good one. Thank you very Thank much. You. Nice applause. Thanks. Yeah. Bye -bye. Yeah.